Hello everyone and welcome to the Arcade. This is the second video in a series on the Zookeeper Scratch build and in this episode we'll be going over the organization of the CNC plants. everyone welcome to the second video so originally I had planned to do one video covering both my organization and tool cuts and as I've started to go through the tool cut process I realized it was way too long so I'm going to split this up this is going to be a video on how I organize my cuts first and then I'll do a video on the actual creation of the tool paths if you have no interest feel free to skip past those uh, do a future video as well this is the file that is downloaded from the site and the first thing I usually like to do is start to organize my cuts. Um, so in this case, my problem is, is that the file here is set up really for a horizontal machine, which is how I had my CNC set up originally. And I don't have it that way anymore. So um, just for my own uh, simplicity, basically I'm just going to create a new version of the software or a new version of the file um, and copy it in with the correct orientation. Um, not really necessary, but it helps me for uh, keeping things straight as I try and organize things. All right, so 48 by 96, we'll create the file and we'll paste it in, okay? All right, so now we got everything pasted in. So the first thing that's really important for you to do is really figure out what all the pieces are. And some of this can look pretty confusing when you first get started. And I'm even confused with some of them that I cut a long time ago and uh, didn't label things well. So first thing I usually like to do is go through and label all the parts and make sure I understand what they are. Then the plan after that is to organize it into cut sheets. So basically um, material that will fit on a single sheet of uh, material and also organize it by material type. So in this case, uh, for this example, I'm going to be cutting this cabinet out of melamine. Basically, this is a cheap, easy material that uh, finishes very easily when applying full side art, and it also eliminates me having a need to paint or put uh, laminate on the side of the cabinet. So the uh, majority of the cabinet is going to be out of black melamine, and a portion of the cabinet is going to be out of plywood. Um, I believe in using plywood for, for structural parts just makes sense, and I think most people that are cutting cabinets are doing the same. So with that said, from here, I usually wind up making sure I have all my pieces labeled how I want. Side of the cabinets are pretty obvious. Back door over here. Back door is usually something that I cut at the very end, and so I don't really have an interest in. So I'm going to move that out of the way for now, just uh, knowing that I'll have to come back to it at some point in time. Top, this is the top of the cabinet. Um, also what the marquee slides into. Um, this piece is a little bit difficult to cut on CNC just because uh, the Taito cabinets use a um, dado construction, uh, which basically means that they're kind of like a slot that fits in. I'll put a picture up on the video here. And the dado construction, basically, um, you're cutting, or for this top piece, you have to cut it on two different sides. So the dados get cut on one side of it, and the slot for where the uh, marquee will slide into gets cut on the other side of the wood. So um, you can either try and cut it one side and then flip it over and cut it the other way, or usually what I would wind up doing, honestly, is cutting it on one side and then run the, running the slot cut for the uh, marquee through on the, uh, the back side using a table saw. Speaker panels. This is the top back portion of the cabinet, the bottom back portion of the cabinet. The plywood base, front of the cabinet, um, also dado construction, as you can see from the sides. Your plywood base pieces for, for the, uh, the pedestal. And then if you don't have the metal frame for the monitor, this is the plywood insert that will also fit uh, your standard monitor. For, um, if we zoom in on here, this here, these two pieces represent the uh, a spacer that kind of goes at the bottom of the um, monitor surround and monitor glass, and also that the um, control panel will lay into. So this is basically the width of the piece, the size of the piece, and here's a profile image of what's going on. And these two pieces here, I don't have a clue what they're used for, so I'd have to go back and try and figure that out. All right, so 
Uh, from here, next thing to, for me to do is organize my, my materials. So my plywood materials, I'm going to move off to the side and save those for later. So those are plywood. These base pieces are plywood for me. And this monitor surround is plywood for me since I'm not going to be using the metal one. All right, from here, what I'm going to do next is take my pieces and rotate them and organize them into my cut sheet pattern. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to rotate these 90 degrees and get these lined up. Um, this piece is a custom piece. I'll have to deal with that later with the back door at some point in time. And now I also want to make sure I'm going to try and get these top pieces in as well. So there's my front piece. And if I can, I'm going to try and rotate these also so that I can get these cut. And organize. All right, so there's my first sheet. So what I usually wind up doing is saving these all out as separate sheets. Um, I know you can do uh, sheet layouts within within the application itself, but for me, usually it's just a little bit simpler to do this. So I'm going to save as, save it to the desktop, and I'm going to call this Zookeeper. And I'll call it um, And I'm saving it as Zookeeper Melamine Sheep 1 with it. This just keeps it a little bit easier for organization for later. All right, so there's my first sheet. I'll move that out of the way. I'll take my second sheet here from pieces that I'm going to put in my second sheet. Rotate this again as well. And then I still have my top that I need to cut. Need to get that squeezed in there and my speaker panel. And obviously I got some room to move things around here. Oh. All right, so I'll save that as my sheet two. I'll move this out. Oops. And then my plywood pieces at the end here. And like I said, I'm really just trying to arrange this per cut sheet, um, trying to get the most out of this as I can with it. Now, if you're cutting lots of cabinets, you can spend a lot of time, energy, and effort embedding on wood with it um, for what's going on. And I may go back and clean this up a little bit later before I cut it but um, give you a ballpark idea of what the, what the game plan is. All right, and I'll save this as my plywood sheet. All right, so you may be sitting there going, okay, he's got all this stuff laid out. Why do you skip the back door? So usually I skip the back door from cutting on the front end um, just because as I assemble the cabinets, I find that the back door um, may be impacted by how I assemble the cabinet. And so the uh, top back or the bottom back might be slightly off because I have the angle slightly different than was originally intended or tolerances may be a little bit off. So um, if I'm a quarter inch too big or too small, um, it's not the end of the world, and I can usually recut things, but um, if you're going to be cutting it by CNC, why waste the material on the front end for doing it? So um, usually I wind up leaving the back door for last. I'll basically cut the whole cabinet, assemble the whole cabinet, and then the back door will be the last thing I'll be adding on. Um, in this situation, I'm also going to be making some changes to the cabinet. With how I'm going to be building the or installing the boards on the inside with it, I'm not going to be mounting all the boards to the back door, and I don't also have the hinges to uh, mount the back door pieces as well. So that's also going to make uh, make things a little bit different. I'll have a few design changes, and I'll talk about that in the next video as well. 
All right, everyone. So we're now back at that first sheet of melamine that I just saved out from a couple minutes ago. Um, so this is basically what I'll be looking to cut. Um, there's a few pieces here I need to address before I move on. So um, there's uh, first off, there's this piece here, which I affectionately refer to as the key. Um, this is basically to assist with layout and put to, and to hold the spot for the control panel. Um, this is twofold. So when I go and cut this, I'm going to want to cut a slight slot into the side of the wood so I know where to place this. But I'm also going to need to be cutting an external piece as well to put into that slot for it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy the piece and I'll paste it and we'll move it oops, and we'll move it up here to cut. Now because it's the exact same size as what was there before, I'm actually going to wind up shrinking this piece a little bit so that it fits in. Um, what I've found is usually I need to shrink things about seven hundredths of an inch, um, five to seven hundredths of an inch, depending on how tight I need them to be, um, so that I can get them to fit in uh, nicely when I embed, embed pieces into each other. So in this case, what I'm going to do is take this piece here and I basically go, oops, sorry, wrong tool. Go to offset, and I'm going to offset the piece inward, and I'm going to offset it, we'll say, seven hundredths of an inch, and I'm going to delete the original. And so what this is going to do, it's going to basically redraw this piece here, um, basically seven hundredths of an inch smaller. So I have my slightly smaller piece. Now the other thing that I need to do for this piece here is also to um, allow it so I can cut the corners out. So what will happen is when you use a CNC on machine, you're basically using a round router bit that goes on the inside. And when you get to the corner here, it can't cut the corner out because there's a radius that goes around the inside of it. Okay. And so what you wind up doing in these situations is what they call dog boning. Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to take a radius and we're just going to cut a small radius. Um, See, tool radius is going to be 0.13. I'm using a quarter inch bit for when I'm doing this. So some of these setups will be bit dependent for what you're doing. Um, but basically, I'm just going to create a small radius in here so that when I cut this very thin uh, hole, or not hole, but really just a pocket inside this panel, that I will be able to insert this piece into it and not have a problem with the corners from the radius with it. Uh, the other piece that I need to change from here is also this is where the original metal frame would mount for the um, monitor and so these are the original holes for it uh, if you look at the boxes that are drawn here with it this top box here is three quarters of an inch which basically represents the thickness of this wooden frame and so in this case i have to do the same thing here so i'm looking to make a copy of this piece here so i'm going to copy that and move it off and I'll have to rotate it to try and get it a little more facing in the right direction for cuts. All right, and so this piece I'm also going to shrink again. Um, seven hundredths of an inch and I'm going to delete the original. And also here I'm also going to cut my dog bones again to allow the piece to fit in. Oops. Since I have overlapping vectors here, I'm just doing it to both. Okay. All right. So I think that that's probably about it for this one. Um, the other thing that I'm going to modify on this cabinet is this. I'm not going to have the uh, swinging door, as I mentioned earlier. And so I'm not going to have the top cut um, groove, essentially, so that the um, door overlaps over top of the top panel. So I'm going to remove that extra extra um, pocket, essentially, that we're going to do that. I'm going to do it now just so I remember to do it for later as well when I'm actually going to set in the cuts. And now I'm going to save this, and this represents all my changes for this uh, first sheet. All right, so this is the second sheet of melamine for cutting. And basically, I'm just going to be repeating what I did before. So my key, I'm going to make a copy of as well.
and I'm going to be shrinking it just like I did last time as well. So I'm going to be shrinking it the uh, seven hundredths of an inch, and I'm going to delete the original. And then also as we go down to the key here, I'm going to dog, dog bone the corners on this as well. Same as before. Uh, for the shelf, I'm going to make a copy of that as well. I'll move that over here for now. And I'll dog bone the uh, corners on this one. And then this piece here, I'll also rotate and get aligned for, for cutting. And shrink it as well. We'll put it up here for now. I'll get that organized when I go to cut. The other thing to do here is I also um, will ungroup these. So these are all grouped together to make it easier to move all the parts around so you don't lose something. So you wind up ungrouping them, and this way I'm just going to remove my text now because I obviously won't be needing the text when I go and cut the panels later. And that is pretty much it for sheet two. And we're basically ready to start looking at uh, setting cut pads uh, for the individual sheets, which will be the next video.